I started developing technology as a teenager back in the 1990s. It started with kind of really, really basic websites and I used some scripting languages to kind of play around with my computer and to create some interactive programs. Uh, and this was really, really fun, but when I really got into it and I started doing it professionally, I found an absolute love for creating new things, whether that's new websites or new databases. And it was something about creating new databases that really kind of clicked with me. It was this uh, kind of passion for taking kind of very unstructured data or data that's just kind of uh, doesn't tell you anything. and finding ways of structuring it and creating relationships between different data points that gives you insights, that gives you knowledge and information. And I really loved it. I had so much fun doing it when I was younger. But I didn't realize at the time that all the decisions that I was making, even in database design, were really affecting people. They were really affecting the people who were using those technologies. And I tried to kind of think about different ways that I could design the user interfaces so that people can may have an easy and you know reasonably uh, good user experience but I never really challenged myself I never really thought critically about what it means to create a piece of technology that a human being has to use I usually just focused on what I could do as a developer. I wanted to kind of make things a little bit fancy and kind of make sure that I was using all of my skill set as a developer, making sure that I programmed the hell out of it, but I never really thought about what it means to use technology. I just focused on what I could do rather than what I should do. And I think what happens is we, we confuse uh, feasibility with uh, what we actually should try to be focusing on. We confuse, uh, again, what I should do with what I could do. Uh, and I think it's really important that we put a lens on this issue. We really take time to think critically about what this means. and. Since my early days as a tech developer and as a programmer, I've taught thousands of technology students. I've literally taught close to 3,000 now, uh, young aspiring technology developers. And I've never, and not once, ever met a technology developer, young or old, that was actively trying to exclude or alienate or uh, just kind of disenfranchise a group of users. Most of these actions take place because we don't think critically about what that user experience might be and we don't we definitely don't think critically enough about the diversity of users that might be accessing and using our products. And it's not just about who might be using it the day you produce it, but who could be using it in the future. One of the things I tell all of my uh, students who study web development with me is, well, I don't tell them, I ask them. It's kind of a provocative question. Should you be developing a website for someone who doesn't have access to the internet? And the kind of knee-jerk reaction is kind of, well, why would I develop a website for somebody who doesn't have access to the internet? That doesn't make any sense. But the real uh, kind of the answer that I'm trying to get them to think more critically about is what happens when that person does have access to the internet? What happens when that person is given access to the internet on a temporary basis? They borrow a smartphone from a friend or family member, or they have to log on at a library or a, uh, you know, a public computer to use a website. What happens then? They may not have access to the internet, but they may get access to the internet. And then we have a whole new set of considerations when it comes to the design of that technology. But like I said, most technology developers, they just, they don't realize, they don't think about what that might be like for a user. And I, so I think a lot of them are just like how I used to be. They would think about what they could do, but they never really think about what they should be doing when they, uh, when they create new technologies. And the challenge really becomes not just acknowledging that there's a diversity of users that might be wanting to access and use your technology, but really getting yourself out of the immediate mindset of this is about me, uh, I'm the closest point of reference to who my users might be, and thinking more critically about who, uh, who is very different than me uh, might be using that piece of technology, and what ways could they be using it and that I can't expect or that I can't anticipate. 
uh, it's really hard to develop a piece of technology for someone who is outside of your immediate point of reference, your immediate um, experience. Uh, it's really hard to imagine what it might be like. And so what I tell my students is to please, please, please don't just rely on your kind of well, I don't think it's too strong to say prejudices, but really think uh, critically about how you can learn about those, those uh, users' experiences. How can you connect with those users and understand what their experiences might be? And this could be everything from reading a biography about someone who uh, you might want to, you might consider as having a different experience than you, or it could be uh, connecting with those users in a real life environment where you're doing testing or you're working with them collaboratively and designing that technology. And I think that is what comes down to the most critical factor is really the sense of cooperation and collaboration that you can have with people who uh, might be different than you, who might have a different experience than you. And uh, I think it's, I've lived a really awesome life because most of the technologies that are out there are kind of designed with people like me in mind. But when we design technology for people who aren't like us, who are different in some way, who have had a different experience, then suddenly it opens up a whole new world of usability, of accessibility that we wouldn't be able to have otherwise.